Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the first Sunday of Advent. It's so great to be with you, and I, I love this topic. I always love all of our topics because they're speaking to such deep things within ourselves. But this topic at this very moment is quite potent. It's a question worthy of being asked at each moment in our lives. But now that we're entering into a whole series together, I thought it would be fantastic to take that theme and let it be the prevailing theme, the undercurrent that takes us into a deep experience of Advent and Christmas. So as many of you are probably familiar, Advent usually has an Advent wreath. I've chosen to do away with the wreath part, the evergreen part, and let that just be in my heart. <laughs> I didn't want the needles in my home. But I did bring out the candles, the three purple and the one pink. And there'll be another time when we go a little deeper into the symbolism of those candles. But as we begin, even though we're not starting with the meditation, I wanted to light the first candle to mark the beginning of our time together. Fantastic. For those of you who've celebrated Christian liturgy, you are lightly familiar with the meaning of Advent. What's interesting about Advent is that the word itself is somewhat paradoxical because it's popularly celebrated as a time of preparation, as a time of hopeful expectation. And yet the actual meaning of the word Advent is arrival. The meaning of the word is coming into being. And this coming is seen from a threefold aspect. In the Christian tradition, it's referred to as the historical remembrance of the coming of Jesus in time. The second meaning is the coming of Christ within every heart, the awakening into Christ consciousness. And the third is the eschatological coming the fulfillment of all in all. So we have Advent inviting us to look at ourselves from a threefold place and to let all three aspects, all three places, if you will, be the very occasion that we experience the coming of Christ. That would be time, so that would be our personal history. It's a reminder that your entire storyline, that what makes up the you from a time and space perspective is actually the part, is actually a part of the coming of Christ. It's actually very important. There is not a hair on your head that is not counted, we read in the scriptures. So that's not something to be transcended or moved away from or let go. But what is meant to happen is that it become the occasion wherein you experience your eternal nature. And then the way you speak of your story, the way your history plays upon you, moves from the unconscious, unintegrated parts of the self into the wholeness of the self into the wholeness of what you are. And then even when you speak your history, it's bright with the grace of God. The coming of Christ in our hearts is that awakening into the present moment. And that's a really popular phrase today, isn't it? Like living in the present moment. And it's awesome because it points to a deep truth within ourselves. We're still in process, we're still in evolution of understanding what it means because the very clinging to the present moment can 
lead us to bypass or repress or fail to honor what's coming into the present moment for us. It can lead us into a dualism. But the coming of Christ in our hearts, the awakening of Christ, is to find that the present moment is the place of salvation. That the present moment is where all fullness can be found, can be found. And in that finding is a direct experience. And the third, the eschatological, that is when we are in the place that we are not bound by time and space. So in many cultures, eschatological would have referred to what happens after death, the end times, the end time for you personally, and the end time for creation, because it's always been believed that creation as we know it will pass away at some point. But eschatological also points to an end of time as we know it, a fullness of realization that has more dimensions, that doesn't leave or transcend time and space, but also catches it up in the timeless. So I invite you during this time of Advent, when we're beginning a journey, a four week journey together, to take into account these three parts, not of something external from yourself, but as an internal place of calling, an internal place of arriving, of arriving into the fullness of yourself as divinity in all these three aspects. I'm going to begin before we get to our meditation by reading a few scripture passages. And I'd like you to let those scripture passages land on you like you would let a warm summer rain land on your skin. Let the words rain upon you like little droplets of water and notice what happens as they hit your skin, as they penetrate you, as you hear them. And after reading those lines of scripture, giving a little space in between each one, I'll set the stage. Most of the time our meditations will happen so quickly, only 15 minutes a day, that there'll be very little reflection from me on the nature of the topic but today we have a little bit more time to dive deeper. So I'm gonna set the stage for you just as a way of getting ourselves ready for arriving in a new way, arriving into the new life that's meant to be ours. So if you're inclined, I invite you to close your eyes. These passages are so illuminative and you are the place where these passages can find new sounding, new meaning. In the beginning was the Word and the Word was with God and the Word was God. Genesis chapter 1. By the word of the Lord, the heavens were made, and by the breath of God's mouth, all the host. God spoke, and it came to be. 
Psalm 33. By God, all things were created. All things were created through God. All things were created for God. Colossians chapter one. The heavens proclaim the glory of God and the firmament shouts out God's handiwork. Day unto day tells the story, and night unto night reveals the message. Psalm 19. God said, let there be light, and there was light. Genesis chapter 1. And I say to you, as you are here with me and we are in community, what is the divine word to you? What is the divine word to you? Advent, while it means a coming and an arrival, awakening into the fullness of your being. It's also at each given moment, simultaneously having your word undone. Having all you know undone. Stepping into the mystery and not even stepping into the mystery from a place of confident faith, but stepping into the mystery from a place of what is my faith. Because we hear in many inspired texts, the Bible included, we hear this invitation and this admonition almost to realize that whatever we ask for in prayer, we will receive if we have faith. And prayer is your spoken word, isn't it? So if if your prayer, if your spoken word can accomplish all that it longs for, how does that relate to the ineffable essence speaking a word and accomplishing all it plans for and asks for and puts out? What is the relationship between the word of you speaking forth and coming to fulfillment and the word of the ineffable essence, the uncreated, uttering a word, breathing a word, speaking a word, and it coming into fulfillment? If you've done Advent with me, you'll be reminded that I always look to Advent with a certain, a certain sense of rawness. Advent for me in the monastery was one of the most surprising experiences because energetically I found myself plunged into chaos. The chaos that comes before new creation. And that's a very uncomfortable place to be. Most of us are not comfortable with recognizing that coming into new form, into new life, means that we are largely in a place of chaos. So how can we prepare in this moment? We can prepare by learning 
to do a number of things. Learning to recognize what is my faith right now? What is the spoken word of me right now that's aligned, that's integrated, that's whole, that shows up in a life of faith? The second learning is where am I being called to right now? The third is how, how can I learn to sit as an open question? And the fourth is how can I hear the word spoken within me? I will lay out some of my truth. And then I want you to take the journey to your own truth. That You may find this to be true for you. You may not find it to be true for you. But if we can ask those questions, if we could sit to awaken into the word of God that we are. If God, this ineffable essence, spoke word into being, and we are a being, then could it be possible that we are that anthropologos, that we are that spoken word that we call human, man or woman? Is it possible that as the breath of God, that our greatest calling is to be that spoken word at every moment? And if so, is it possible that as we align into our spiritual fullness most freely, most consistently, that our word becomes our own, that every word that we utter is so our own that we are that divinity, we are that utterance. I believe that's the potential. I believe that that is what Advent is fixing to do within us. I believe, I believe, I believe. What do you believe? So each of our meditations will break open a different aspect of this question and will allow us the spaciousness together collectively to sit as the open question and to learn to hear the word spoken. Because it's one thing to sit, it's another thing to hear. And to hear in the fullest sense of that, where our body is enlivened, where our mind is filled with insight, where our heart opens freely and fully, where our soul can realize its potential and be the anthropologos that we're called to be. Then we become the living song. So let's use our final time together to set the stage. I invite you, if you're going to do this series each morning or each day, that you set up a sacred place. For me, it's quite simply going to be this purple stand, which is actually the color of Advent. The purple of Advent is a bluish purple versus a, uh, a reddish purple. And you could get the candles, and each time we gather for the first week, you'll light the first purple candle and next week we'll light two candles, two purple candles. I'm keeping it very simple because Advent is meant to be a stripping away of all the extras. But you could set up your place to have the symbols and the objects that can support you in sitting as an open question. Sitting with the expectation that not only you will hear the word spoken within you, but that you're meant to hear the word, that the word is this unceasing utterance that you're meant to be abiding in. So if you have not already done so, I invite you to close your eyes. And with the eyes closed, 
bring your inward gaze to the reflection and the thoughts that are most strong right now from these considerations of the word. What's hitting you this morning around word? And whatever came to you, whether it's clear or unclear, remember that we're part of the chaos right now. That part of our coming into being, that part of our being, the word, is recognizing that we are chaos coming into new form at every moment. So we invite this chant to awaken us in a new way. This traditional chant of Advent, breaking open the season, jettisoning us into the next four weeks of intensity together. Relax and let go of all the distractions and all the inner states that take you away from this moment of being. Creator al me sit et hum, et en hallux credensi hum, Iesu redemptor omnium, intende volti supplicum, Qui demonis ne fratibus, perit et orbis impetus, amoris actus languidi, mundi me de la factus est, comune qui mundi ne fas, ut expiari sacrucem, E virgini sacrario, intacta prodis victima, cuius potestas gloriae, nomen que cum primum sona, et celites et inferi, tremente curvantu genu. Te de precamor ultime, manium die iudicem, armi supene gratiae, defende nos apostipus, virtus honor las gloria, Deo patricum fidio, Sancto simul paraclito, in seculorum secula. If you wish, wherever you are, as you sink into this rhythm, tone these three phrases with me. Audibly or inaudibly. 
In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the word was God. In the beginning was the word. And the word was God. And the word was with God. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. You are that beginning, O oh, beloved one. You are the beginning. You are the alpha and the omega point. You are the Christ in form and coming into fullness as form. Lay down the false ideas and senses of self that limit you and stand as the open question for the answer is your new birth. And as we bring this first Sunday of Advent, meditation number one to a close, I invite you to bring your awareness fully into your body, knowing that every cell in the body wishes to be alive and fully alive. 
just begin to wiggle the fingers and the toes, reminding yourself that you in form is a beautiful word of God. So we want to ground all that's happened here into the flesh. And bring the chin down to the chest. And upon raising the chin, draw the palms together. And to open the eyes with the phrase, Namaste. Namaste, my friends. Great to be taking this journey with you. Have a great day.